Almost there. I am going to start here in just a minute. Give me just a minute. I got to refresh my page. And it's not refreshing, so that's not so good. We're almost there. Not refreshing. I'm going to have to start over again. What's going on? Okay, I think I'm just going to start. Well, I was making some uh, videos tonight, and I did a really long one on um, zirconia bridge design, and I thought, you know what, I'll just go live real fast and then uh, show one little quick, quick little uh, nuance, little something that makes something a little bit better when it comes to your bridges. And that's the ridge lap. Um, you know, it, when you're making that bridge and you're so worried about connector size and occlusion and everything, one of the things I think that actually looks really, really nice is if you at least get the uh, ridge lap right. So it actually looks like the tooth is coming out of the, uh, the gingiva. And so I'm just going to give you a quick little trick on, on how to do this. And so, uh, if you're watching, I appreciate that. And if you have any questions along the way, just uh, give me a little shout out. I need to make sure I can see you. Okay. Um, give me just a second. I got, I got to get, there we go. I got to get my right window up. There we go. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show a quick case of what I mean by this. And then I'm going to go into the Ceric software and describe uh, basically how to get a little bit better ridge lap of this. So uh, let me switch over to my software. Uh, one of my all-time favorite blocks is the uh, Zercad Multi from Ivoclar Vivident. It is uh, uh, one, I think it's the highest aesthetic material that we have when it comes to chair-side zirconia. But the other thing about it is that it's a bigger block. So we, we tend to get more uh, we can get more teeth into it, and then also it can accommodate curve of speed a little bit better. And so the uh, Zercad Multi is a great option. Uh, we designed this. Uh, I'm going to, again, the video that I made for uh, Digital Enamel TV, I put the entire thing on, on that. But I'm going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the Ponic the, on the premolar on how to get that, you know, make, make it look a little bit more tooth-like and look like it's erupting through the, uh, the, the gingiva and then also a little bit more of the papilla form. What I love about the uh, multi-block, or the Zercad multi, I should say, is that you know it has that transition of translucency, and you know when we run it through the prime mill or the dry mill MCXL, it mills exquisitely. And uh, I wasn't really a huge fan of zirconia when it first came out. When it came to uh, chair side milling, I didn't really think it had much of a place, just because I was. So hooked on Emacs all these years, but it is it is an awesome option, and I'm definitely converting over to the zirconia side of things. If you do not have a, a dry mill zirconia uh, milling unit, you should really think about it because it is much more efficient, and basically it's because water isn't getting introduced into the material and you can run it through your speed fire and it's it's always faster and plus i don't think it uh, makes so uh, much of a mess in the milling unit yes it gets a lot of dust and it's pretty dirty in there but it's cleansable it's easily to wash all that out so anyway get yourself a dry milling unit maybe the even the prime mill so this is the uh, restoration afterwards. Again, I'm not going to go through all the design of this because uh, I did that on a big long video I just produced on Digital Enamel TV. But I'm going to tonight uh, when I'm live, I'm going to talk about the um, modified ridge lap uh, on that premolar and kind of how to design that little section and also how to design it to where you're not getting food up under, or the patient's not getting food up underneath that pontic. Uh, the main reason why I like this Zercad Multi is because you get a really good translucency at that occlusal third. 
Uh, the case I'm going to show you, I, I did do it out of um, Katana, which I, I think it's a good material as well. But if you're going to get more translucency, you have to center it longer. And the um, Zercad Multi uh, requires you to center it longer. If you're going to run this through um, the speed fire, this could be like maybe three hour centering time. So this may not be a one visit uh, appointment or it could be one day appointment or maybe insert it the next day. Katana is definitely faster and maybe something you'd rather rather use because you're trying to get it done in one visit. Uh, a three unit Katana bridge will center in 30 minutes and plus it mills fairly quickly as well. So uh, I'm going to flip over to, oh wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. So we were talking about the zirconia part of the bridge design, but we're going to talk about that that ridge lap. I'll show you the uh, the case that I'm going to design. Uh, this lady, uh, you know, obviously fractured off the coronal portion of her tooth and not, not a tooth that could be salvaged. And then the two adjacent teeth obviously need work done to them. And you know, in modern dentistry, I think we, we rush into implants a little too quickly. Bridges are still a good way to restore teeth. That's maybe not the best, but, uh, you know, I think we're kind of, we're a little bit implant high sometimes and we, and we forget there are other options. So this lady got a lot of bang for her buck, let's call it, uh, by doing a bridge rather than um, an implant and two crowns. So the preparations on these uh, I'll show you the uh, the buckle shot of this as well, but uh, we made a temporary of this just to shape some of the the tissue. And what I hope you don't feel like you have to shape it a hundred percent with the temporary and take all that time to uh, get the tissue to be be so mature. In fact, it may be advantageous to where it's not totally mature. This is probably you know 99% of the way there. Because in the software, when the tissue's a little bit, let's call it softer, you can put some pressure into it. So when you're seeding it, maybe you see just a faint little blanching and you're gonna keep that uh, ponic from having tooth or uh, food debris that gets up underneath it, which I'm gonna show you here in a minute. All right, so let me go here and then I'll go over to my software, okay. So again, uh, I did a 45 minute long video on this entire design. So uh, check that out on Digital Enamel TV. Um, you, you can join for free. You can watch the entire video right now if you want. It's three day free trial, so uh, give it a go. But what I'm talking about is this zone right here and how we can make it look a little bit better. So on the initial proposal, it's almost always too flat. And it's because basically in the CERC software now, we don't have to draw what's called the bottom line or the baseline, uh, which is a good thing. So basically we're not drawing where it's going to touch, but it, it's always in a, uh, a flat type area. So the two different options is to just take like the two directional circular shape tool or your add tool. So. I'm gonna start pulling this up and I'm not worried that it's going through the tissue. So what you're gonna see here in a second, when I flip this over, it's definitely making tissue impingement here. I'm not worried about that yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some bulk to this and I wanna thicken this up on the buckle surface as well. Give it a little bit of a contour. Once you get that, then you're able, well, that's kind of wonky. Let me smooth that up. So select the smooth tool, melt that out a little bit. And now what you do is you flip it over and then you start to decide what the uh, intensity of the tissue penetration is gonna be. This is not like two structure. You don't want blue with the hint of green because when you seat that bridge, it's not gonna to touch the tissue well enough and the patient's gonna be able to get food up underneath it. So you definitely want the ceramic or the zirconia to impact that tissue in a way that's gonna keep food from getting up underneath there. So don't be afraid to do what I'm getting ready to do right now. I'm gonna turn off the upper jaw and I'm just gonna build this entire uh, ridge lap up, not worrying about the colors. So I want to get that up. And you know, you, you just don't want it to be too sharp. You want it around round surfaces. And I mentioned this uh, in other videos. I always say that CERC is a process, not a product. 
So don't feel like you have to make this exactly perfect. If you want to make it um, uh, perfect, you're going to spend a lot of time, which is not a bad thing. It's just that I'd rather get it in the milling unit as fast as I can, knowing that I want to polish some things back. So let me get this a little bit more pointy. Okay, now we're starting to look like we've got a zenith there. Fancy perio term there. Get that. And now, now you turn the upper jaw back on. You can do it full strength and then use the remove tool. Remove would be the only tool to select on this. And then you can start punching this, punching this back. But the problem is now I'm starting to lose touching of the tissue in this zone. So you have to do it in increments. And I would risk a little bit of red on that last little bit because that's not going to be a huge surface area of tissue touching. But this is going to be like a void above the bridge ponic for which you need to add material. So we can either turn this upper jaw completely off or do you just make it a little bit of, uh, transparent so we can see through it and work through it. Uh, the add tool, I, I'm a big believer on using as few tools as possible, so I do a lot with the form tool. But another tool that you could have used <clears throat> is a two-directional circular shape tool. And what you'll see here is that now I'm making it big and fat, but that's kind of like a, uh, a bullet shape. Now you use the smooth tool to come in and just start melting this back. Now you're going to see some color start to disappear because the tissue isn't a perfect bullet shape. But in general, you want to have a little bit of yellow and maybe a, a hint of red. Now this zone here, you could let it mill with some red contouring uh, because you'll know when it gets to the uh, green state, you can easily hand finish this back to give it a little bit more of a channel so that they can get the floss in there. So basically that's how you would do it in, in that direction or that, that method, I should say. All right, let me uh, switch this back. I'm gonna reset this to get all that redone. Another way to do this would just be to redraw, let me go back here, your baseline. So this little circle here, you can edit it, edit it or you can just drag it. It doesn't really matter, I'll drag it. So what, basically what the baseline is, is where it's gonna touch the tissue. And this is where Sarek does a decent job of making it, but a lot of the times you need to manipulate it. So if, if you just take this and kind of pull it up and you can, you can get that, that shape that, that you want there. Again, Sarek is a process, not a product. So um, always error a little bit more than you think because you can always take away later if you want. So like, let's say that that point is a little bit too high, like it doesn't match like the adjacent to structure. It doesn't matter because you can uh, mill it. I'm gonna change tools here so we can see it. You can mill it and then hand finish that, that back, but at least we're getting a good uh, height, uh, a zenith where that um, apex looks like it's coming from. And then we've got a good buckle corridor. And then when I move that, it's gonna push into the tissue again. And then again, the remove tool, I think is the appropriate tool on this if you because it will take it away but it doesn't destroy the surface if you use let me redo that if you use the smooth tool on this particular one or situation what you'll notice it actually start here let me switch this to smooth what will happen is it will start adding material because it's a concavity rather than a convexity so again, you wanna have some green and some yellow. You're not gonna be able to fill it in all the way just because of the nature of the tissue, but you want it to be smooth. So the last thing to do would be to check it out. And that looks pretty smooth. You can melt it back a little bit more, just knowing that once it's centered, you can finish it back to get that little bit of a channel in there. But the idea of this is how to get this little modified ridge lap, which I need a little bit more oomph to it on the... Sorry, I'm running like three computers right now. I've got two different mice <laughs> I'm just trying to manage. I'm trying to get a little more oomph right there, just a little bit more thickness. So that's an excellent way to give it 
a little bit more anatomical uh, appearance. So anyway, I uh, spent a little bit longer time than I, I expected, but uh, please check out Digital Enamel TV. Uh, if you're watching, you've got a question, I've got a few more minutes that I can, I can talk about zirconia bridges. And I think, well, first of all, I gotta, th I gotta say thanks to, I have sold so many of our um, zirconia burr blocks i can't believe it i know i'm not i'm not making a ton of money off it it's not like my kids are going to go to a, a better college because of it it's just a, a accumulation of burrs that i liked and i worked with wagner rotary who is one of the best burr companies um, at least in the lab world and it is an amazing little system and so i want while i've got a few more minutes i want to show you a couple burrs that works with it so i'm going to flip over here and go to this and in the completion kit, I don't even have any in, in stock right now. We have to uh, drop ship them because they're, they're all, um, I don't have any in stock, but there, uh, you get a whole bunch more that are in here. But basically there's a green uh, surface and then there's a white surface. And in the pre-centered zirconia, I gotta get my life together here. Let me get this out of the way. One of the burrs that is just phenomenal is this one, and it is, it's very soft. You'll see that, but it, but it works extremely well when it comes to redefining the, um, the fissures and especially making the ponic look like it's separated. So I want to take the, let me get a little bit closer. So what you'll see here is this is very flexible and uh, you use both sides of this instrument. So you're either pulling it or you're pushing it. So as I'm trying to redefine this little embrasure, you just want a little, little bit of RPM, not, not much. So it's spinning right now. And then I wanna put it into the embrasure. And what you do is you pull it towards you and you'll see it bend as it's coming through. So it makes a really, really nice transition. Instead of flipping the block all the way around and doing it the other direction, you can put it in and then push it so you can see the flex of the burr and it tapers it out extremely well so that it appears like they're separated. So anyway, this is one of the burrs that's on our green state to completion uh, system. All right, well, my friends, uh, fun, fun night tonight. Thank you for uh, watching, and uh, we'll see you on Digital Enamel TV. Thanks, everybody.